In this Mathematica tutorial, a student asked me, what does this expression here mean? And so in this session, uh, that's precisely what we're going to talk about. What do all of these funny symbols in, in this mean and how can you use them in your own work? Okay, so we're going to start looking at uh, rule delayed, set delayed and conditional actions. Okay, let's get into it. first one is rule delayed. Now, this is how you enter this into the computer. So I'll just open a new cell and just show you. All right, so colon and the greater than symbol. And uh, if I just press something after that, they come together and make an arrow. Okay, um, so I could do this here as well. Just press the space bar after that. All right, so um, We'll start with building a rule using rule delayed. So rule, now this is a variable I'm going to put into memory here. So rule equals, it's, it's the replacement rule of replacing x with a random real number. Okay, but it doesn't actually put this into memory as a specific random real number. It lets that sort of be open until um, it's called on. All right, so here's an example. First, we'll build a list of uh, five X's. Or actually, since we're in Queensland, why don't we make that four X's? Okay, um, so then this is just the replacement rule. So the slash and then the dot means just replace, and here is the rule. However, this is going to um, call on this um, every time it sees an X. Okay, so here we go, shift and enter. So here we see the four X's, and then we see uh, the various real numbers that come out of this. Even though we've got the same four X's, it's calling on uh, random real every time it sees an X. Okay, right, so let's clear all F. Um, because I think I put that into memory earlier. And this just shows that um, the difference between uh, the, the colon and the arrow and, the, and just the arrow. There's no difference in this case. Um, now what I'm doing here is using uh, repeated replace, I think this is called, or, or replace repeated. That's probably more like it. Okay, this again means to replace using this rule on the right until um, there's no more updating. All right, so the two of these do the same thing. Okay, next, let's have a look at set delayed. So this is a colon and an equal sign. So uh, I'm going to look at a similar example to the last one. But in our first example here on, on set delayed, it's more of a non-example. All right, so what I do first is I say s equals this random, um, just a random number. So random function and then square bracket with nothing in it. Okay, I'll leave the semicolon off so it displays. And then we have a, th a list of three s s's and let's have a look at what this does. Okay, so we have our random real number, 0.26, etc. And then you can see the same random real number appears three times. So this is going to allow me to emphasize a difference in uh, the set delayed rule, I suppose, uh, that we use next. Okay, so here um, we see r is a variable, but again, it doesn't take on a value straight away, it only when it's called on, or only when it appears. So does it calculate this? Okay, so we'll get three different random numbers this time. And there we have three different random numbers. Okay, the next thing we should discuss now is, a con is conditional action. So a slash and then a semicolon. Um, so first, the first example of this is a conditionally defined function. 
So this um, is a variation of something that I found in the help file. So um, I just simplified it a little bit. So it basically says if x is positive, then set the output of f of x as the square root of x. Okay, and here's how to use it. So it's just, um, actually just to emphasize, I'm going to build another function in front of it just to show you. So let's call this g. Um, and this function g would always give you the square root of x. But the difference here between g and f is that f has this condition um, to only re supply the square root of x if x is positive. Okay, so you can be sure to get a real solution. So let's try these two out. And I guess what I'll do here is take g of 5 also. Okay, so we have the square root of 5, and that's the output of g of 5. Uh, let's try g of minus 5 as well. Okay, so g of minus 5 gives the imaginary number i root 5. Now let's have a look at what f did. So f of 5 indeed gives us the square root of 5, but f of minus 5 just returns f of minus 5. Okay, so uh, this is, was conditional, uh, a conditionally defined function, or basically the example is on the slash and the semicolon. But I want to show you an alternative idea using the if function. So I first clear all f, and then um, say that f of x is given by if x is greater than 0, then give square root of x. Otherwise, just say, take a hike. Okay, so let's try that. So here we get the square root of 5 for the f of 5, but we get take a hike, and that's a string, incidentally, uh, for f of minus 5. Okay, uh, conditional replacement at level 1. So this is a replacement rule. Um, in other words, slash dot would do the same thing as replace. Okay, so I set s to be um, the collection of integers from 0 to 10 inclusive, and then I have replace that collection here, uh, and I'm going to everywhere I have a t, apply this conditional. Alright, so here's our conditional replacement um, symbol. So we put in this case, I've got even q, so that is if the um, element is even, then say, yep, even. Uh, and right here is saying, do this at level 1, which is immediately inside. Okay, so let's have a look. I'll run that. And yes, that does what I wanted it to. Um, for 0, it has yep even. For 2, it has yep even, and so on. And all of the odd numbers are just left as, as those odd numbers. All right, now similarly, um, an alternative using the map function. So I could, use, I could just write map and then square brackets. Um, or I could use this technique, slash, and then the at sign. So this is the same s as in 0 to 10 up here. And then I'm saying uh, the even function is going to be applied to every element of uh, s, sorry, the even q function. And then after that, I, I clear it out of memory. So I'll run that. You can already see the answer. So we get true, false, true, false, and so on, right? Uh, because odds and evens oscillate between. Uh, yeah. OK. Now, I guess I should also just write map. Um, even q, I think it goes like this. And then the s, let's try that. All right, yes, that works. And that's the same thing. Okay, so now that we've um, discussed all of these little funny symbols, let's go ahead and talk about... Um, the student's question. So this one, what does this mean? 
Okay, so basically it's going to get used as a replacement rule. So we have this colon equals, and remember the colon equals means set delayed. Okay, so it, it it's basically you're putting a variable into memory as the output of this thing that doesn't um, have a value until it appears, basically. Okay, so what we have then is that get poly is going to be such a variable. It doesn't have a, a value until get poly appears. All right, and then basically what we're doing here is we're re replacing um, a polynomial uh, using a replacement rule with a pair consisting of the leading term followed by the rest of it. Okay, and the condition is that if n, remember that's going to be the leading coefficient in this, or the leading exponent in this case, if n is greater than exponent b comma x. Now what that means is the leading exponent in the polynomial b. All right, so in other words, if n is indeed the largest exponent, then uh, replace that polynomial with a pair of polynomials where the first one is just a x to the n and the second one is a polynomial. Okay, so that's a little bit tricky. Now, um, this last little thing that we see here the underscore and the dot. So that represents an argument that can be omitted. So if we run this here, uh, it just returns x and y. Okay, that's getting a little bit deep. So finally, let's look at something fairly simple. Uh, exponent. So here I just enter a polynomial called q, and I say exponent q comma x. This should give me the highest power uh, involved there. So we have 5 for the highest exponent and then uh, another similar function which you maybe would like to know about is coefficient list. So coefficient list returns a list of the coefficients um, starting with the other end. So the coefficient of x to the power of 0 followed by the coefficient of x to the power of 1 and so on. So 6 comes uh, as the fourth entry because that is 4 beyond the 0 and so on. Okay, so you get a list here of the coefficients. Alright, well that's all I have for you for now. Uh, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.